Let's talk about the new Femtobuck Constant Current LED Driver. Now, before we talk about that though, let's talk about LEDs in general. Now we all know you can't connect an LED directly to a battery in most cases because it'll burn itself out. So in most cases we'll use a current limiting resistor just to make sure that the LED can't draw too much current through the device and damage itself. Now uh, the reason that that would happen is because LEDs, like all diodes, follow a law. There's uh, actually an equation, it's Shockley's diode equation. And what it does is it describes the ideal diode, it describes the current to voltage curve. It's an exponential relationship. So as the voltage increases across the diode, the current increases like this. The line is very steep. So when you're powering an LED, you have to be sure that you're powering it at exactly the right voltage, otherwise that current can go through the roof very quickly and burn out the device. So what that means is if you had a battery, and a battery is a constant voltage supply, not a constant current supply, that was the perfect voltage, then you could hook up an LED to it. But most batteries come in a set number of voltages and LEDs are powered at strange voltages like 2.4 or 3.6. So uh, that's a hard thing to find. This bench supply, however, I can set to any voltage I want and it'll just supply that voltage. So even if I set this bench supply at uh, two amps, it could source two amps, but if I set it to 3.4 volts at two amps, the LED won't draw two amps. It'll just draw whatever current it's rated for at 2.4 volts. Now, if I hook this up to a five volt battery, on the other hand, this LED would die pretty quickly. Getting the Femtobuck up and running is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is connect it to an LED using this output right here, and I'm gonna connect it to one of our soft white three watt LEDs and I'm just using alligator clips to connect to these jumper wires, which I've soldered to the LED connection, which is the output on the Femtobuck. And then I'm gonna connect a power supply to this side of the Femtobuck. Now you need to supply at least seven volts to this side in order for it to work. Anything below that and it just simply won't light up the LED. So I'm gonna connect again using alligator clips on this side and you can see it's driving our LED, and I can vary the voltage on our bench supply up and down all day, and I won't damage the LED. You won't even see a difference in brightness on this side because this is doing all of the current regulation that you need. Now, if you wanted to dim this, you can connect a PWM signal or an analog voltage to these two pins right here. These are the dimming pins. And as long as you're supplying a voltage between half a volt and two and a half volts, uh, it will actually dim the LED accordingly from zero to 100% brightness. The advantage of something like the Femtobuck is that it's a constant current source. So you supply a voltage on this end and it makes sure that the current doesn't change no matter what the voltage does. In fact, uh, as you supply more voltage to this device, the current coming out of this side will be the same, but the device will consume less current. Um, it's a really efficient way of making sure that your LED doesn't burn itself out. The reason it's called the Femto Buck is because it's a buck converter as opposed to a boost converter. Uh, a boost converter is a step up and a buck converter is a step down. So that means you actually have to supply this with a few more volts than the forward voltage of your LEDs. Uh, these three watt LEDs, for instance, run at about 3.4 volts, and you need to give this device at least seven volts. But no matter what the voltage does coming into this, this will only get the right amount of current, so you don't have to worry about your LEDs burning out. 